Scenes from the southern Gaza city of Rafa, which Israeli forces struck early Monday, rescuing two hostages held since Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel, killing at least 67 people and wounding countless others. About 1.5 million Palestinians are sheltering in the city, whose population has grown nearly fivefold since the start of the war. President Joe Biden and Jordan's King Abdullah II agreed Monday to continue to push for the release of hostages and the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza. But their stances on the Rafah operation differed, with Biden repeating his weekend warning to Israel's prime minister. The major military operation in Rafah should not proceed without a credible plan, a credible plan for ensuring the safety and support of more than one million people sheltering there. They need to be protected. And we've also been clear from the start, we oppose any forced displacement of Palestinians from Gaza. Abdullah, however, was more blunt. We cannot afford an Israeli attack on Rafah. It is certain to produce another humanitarian catastrophe. We need a lasting ceasefire now. This war must end. However, on Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, those who say that under no circumstances should we enter Rafah are basically saying, lose the war. Since the conflict started, Biden has gone from supporting Israel to questioning its moves. Last week, he described Israel's military response in Gaza as over the top. But the White House has pushed back against a ceasefire, speaking instead on Monday of a hostage deal that would lead to at least a six-week pause in fighting. A humanitarian pause, an extended pause, that longer than what we saw back in November of a week that would allow us to get all the hostages out, get more aid and assistance in, um, and then hopefully lead to discussions that, that could get us closer to an end to the conflict. Humanitarian officials say this new phase of the conflict in Rafah is terrifying. An extremely high number of civilians, mostly women and children, will likely be killed or injured. We have warned against actions violating the laws of war. The prospect of such an operation into Rafa risks further atrocity crimes. The world must not allow this to happen. Hamas, the U.S.-designated terror group, launched the October 7th attack on Israel that killed 1,200 people and led to the current war. The group has described operations in Rafa as a genocide. Meanwhile, for the people of Gaza, no end in sight to the suffering. Anita Powell, VOA News, the White House.